there was no pre-plan for this particular project as all we were going for was replacement of the head unit for the purposes of getting hands-free cell phone operation. Now we had a failing unit and we had a rattle in the door and so we mentally associated those two things only to find out that after the new replacement we tore it down and the surround was completely gone out of the left speaker. Now the right speaker didn't sound particularly bad. We tore that door down and found out why because it was inoperable. The voice call was out. Okay, I'm going to give this a try. I don't know if it's going to show up on camera or not. But here I have the two old speakers and I wanted to determine the polarity of the uh, truck. So I have a 9 volt battery. Can you see the positive is a little end and we got a little piece of wire. Kind of redneck but it'll work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the wire on it and put the voltage across it. And if the cone throws out, I have the correct polarity. If it tries to pop back in, I have the reverse polarity. So we're going to check on both and I think we're going to find something interesting. I hope you can see that on camera. I won't know until I get in the editing room see if it works. Now I'm going to go over to this one. It doesn't work at all. So the coil is out on this one. Not only is the surround rotten, but the coil actually melted down. Quite honestly, because the truck was 16 years old, I didn't see much point in replacing the factory original component speakers in the front door with component speakers. Now, what I decided to do was disconnect the tweeter and just use a decent quality aftermarket full range speaker. I did upgrade the size from five and a quarter to six and a half, and I think that counts for a little something. And in the back, I just replaced those speakers simply because 16 years old, even though they hadn't failed yet. Hey, by the time we drive them with this new unit, they may very well fail. And while I'm in it, in for a penny, in for a pound. The first potentially controversial thing I did on this was I opened the hole in the door panel itself so that uh, with the larger speaker there was absolutely no mechanical interference. The other thing was I shouldn't have had any mechanical interference because I was going to mount it directly to the door itself to the steel of the door itself. Now that put a little bit of distance between the door panel and the speaker. So one of the things I want to do since this is roughly uh, five and a half inches with a five and a quarter speaker I thought I'd enlarge the hole. Now I found the Scottish cheese thing is right at six inches and I laid it out here and this thing is right at six and a half. So I think I'll try to cut it. I've removed the grill they just had a little tabs bent over in these positions. I've removed the metal grill and I'm going to take my handy dandy uh, rotary style tool and router out that hole. We'll hope that it works pretty good. And here is the hole we got. I took a little tester's paint, put on that white raw edge so maybe it wouldn't show up as much. And it looks a little bit rough in places but I'll let that paint dry and I'll try to to uh, wiggle that the little burrs off I kind of rubbed them off mostly uh, I think it won't show up too bad behind the grill not too bad now I don't know if the best way to do this but I took that translucent piece and I think I showed you on the other cut uh, my first try at it, and then I take a, a flashlight and come up from the bottom and shine around. Try to try to get my best eyeball. I don't know if it's going to work. This is not science. It's a 16 year old truck. The door is crispy as a critter, so I just don't know if it's going to make that much difference or not. But we're going to give it a try. And that's number two. 
it looks halfway decent consider some of it was done freehand I'll paint the edges and let her go now the second potentially controversial thing I did was I did not use any sound dampening mats any mastic mats or put a foam ring around the speaker and people might say well why don't you do that because you know you can't get all your sound to come straight forward in it well First of all, the truck was 16 years old, and I just didn't want to spend the money. But second of all, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Most of the time when people use sound deadening is to keep the rattle out of the door. In my case, like most vehicles, the door is actually vented. It actually has drain holes that allows water to run through it. And I wasn't particularly excited about creating any rust from cutting off all the air. The second thing is the way the door panel actually attaches to the vehicle has holes that you can't close up. However, I did take a little bit of a high temperature metal aluminum duct tape, tape around the immediate hole, around the immediate speaker, and then cover that up with a black cloth tape to kind of dampen the color out so that the white of the door frame was not visible below. The not using a foam ring is simply a choice. Because like most speakers, you have the speaker set behind a grill or a grill cloth and you want nothing in front of it that will actually channel a very narrow channel to force it out. And unless the foam used to make the foam ring is closed cell, it's really not controlling the air. Okay, this is the remaining door and I'm thinking I'm done with it. I've, te I've uh, tester painted the white little fiberglass, whatever this is made out of. And I even got up under here, not that I need that, because unless I'm standing on my head, I'll never see that white edge anyway. But I got a six and a half inch hole, whether that's totally needed, at the speaker mount depth versus the uh, panel in front of it. May it may not bump, but now I know I've got a pretty good sized hole and, you know, it didn't take any real time or effort. And the speaker won't be in until tomorrow anyway. But I think I'll talk just briefly about something I read online. When I read the reviews of these things, sometimes I hear people say, well, it just doesn't have enough base, and I'm real disappointed, and I thought I'd get a better value out of blah, blah, blah brand of speaker. And i got to tell you, it's, when you're replacing a factory speaker, it helps if you kind of know what you're doing, and they may not. And that's not a slide at them. It's just a simple fact that a lot of head units are 4 ohm like this, like the one in that, that truck. This speaker is 4 ohms. The speaker that I pulled out was 4 ohms. So if I replace it with a 4 ohm speaker, I've done exactly the same as what was there before. But I would say they're done in, these two speakers here are in parallel. And the reason I say that is, because I can put just this speaker on the wire and it plays. And that means it can't be in series. So I'm assuming they're in parallel, and 4 ohms and 4 ohms in parallel gives you 2 ohms, which is a lot of factory units are 2 ohms or so. Now, if you put a 4 ohm speaker back, you're going to have the worst of both worlds. There are two things we talk about in, in uh, systems, uh, maximum power transfer and efficiency. Now what happens if you imagine a... 4 ohm resistor in a head in a head unit, a 4 ohm uh, resistance across the speaker, and actually we're talking impedance since they're they're uh, not DC current, but but I'll use the term resistance just to make people feel comfortable. If I had a voltage divider, if I had 4 ohms and 4 ohms and a 12 volt source, I'm going to drop half of it across the first 4 ohms and half of it across the second 4 ohms, and my current's going to be the same throughout. Now what happens if I leave this in and this in, it becomes 2 ohms. So it becomes 4 in the unit and 2 on the door. So I'm going to drop twice as much voltage across the head unit than across the door. So that means if 4 ohms in the unit and 2 ohms on the door, I may have a little more current if it can drive it. But what I end up having is two-thirds of the voltage lost inside the unit and only a third delivered to the door. The other way around is the way you get maximum efficiency. That would only be 33% efficient because I'm 
keeping two thirds in the unit and the other only a third goes to the door. So what happens if I do the other way? What if I um, had an eight ohm door and a four ohm head unit? That would cut down my maximum power because I have more total resistance, but it would be more efficient. It'd be 66% efficient because I would only be dropping a third of the power across the head unit, and two-thirds would be going across the door. So I think I'm going to take this and just leave it unplugged. It's the tweeter. I have a nice big speaker coming in here compared to the five and a half, or five and a quarter that was there, and that way I can get both maximum power and 50% efficiency, which is not the greatest, but it's certainly better than 33% efficient, if that makes any sense to you. So I think I'm going to leave that old tweeter disabled and just go to one speaker. And what do you bet we have a little bit better output? We certainly will have more power transferred. Okay, just briefly, because I'm not going to go into this detail too much, uh, you do need to come on here and pop the little top out, I believe it is, and work this off to take this door panel out. There's only two two screws, two seven millimeter screws, one there and one there. And from there, it's just come up here and pop these out. This uh, door body panel comes right off. All I did was take the old speaker out, which was on the clip mount. The new Polk Audios really did need a spacer because it just was a margin off of fitting quite in there. Didn't really want to set 100%, so I ran two two layers of uh, body tape, a little quarter inch body tape, stuck her down, screwed in four places. Did not have. Uh, because I didn't order these from Crutchfield, ordered them from the Hedgehog, Hedgehog Electronics place. They didn't send adapters, so I cut the uh, cut the actual Chevrolet body connectors off uh, that go to the, the body harness that go directly to the speakers. Cut them directly off and just soldered them in, and uh, that's pretty well much. There's really not much to putting the door speaker in.